Right now, in 2020, we are experiencing a huge surge in 80s culture. From media hits such as Stranger Things to the return of Polaroids and record players, it seems teens everywhere are looking back in eagerness and excitement, trying desperately to immerse themselves in 80s culture. This including fashion, music, but above all, movies. While classics like The Breakfast Club have undoubtedly aged, it's seeming that they've aged well, many of them appearing to be more popular amongst today's high schoolers than the current teen flicks being released. While this may seem weird to some people, it makes perfect sense to me. 80s teen characters were living the dream. Ferris Bueller got to skip school, grab his friends, and dance on top of a parade float to twist and shout. In 16 Candles, Samantha Baker got to live out a fairy tale romance for her sweet 16. While the plots for many of these films tended to be highly wild or fanciful, the characters were still believable due to being played by actual teen actors with authentic writing that lacks the trying too hard sound most of today's movies have. However, the real standout within these films lies within the topics addressed. In the 80s, many of the rougher aspects of teen adolescence were swept under the rug and considered taboo due to many people being uncomfortable discussing them. However, with John Hughes' classic movies, many of these issues were thrust into the light and bluntly shown. One good example of this would be the topic of teen suicide. In The Breakfast Club, Brian Johnson, aka The Brain, lands himself in detention after a flare gun is found in his locker. It's later revealed he was planning on killing himself due to a failed grade. This was due to the pressure put on him by his school, his family, and society itself. In Dead Poet Society, Neil Perry is actually successful in his suicide attempt. This also due to his grades, as well as the pressure put on him by his over-controlling father and his refusal to listen to Neil's own desires. This also shows us the danger that some adults can have on us. John Hughes in particular had a knack for showing the dangerous side of teaching and how the difference between a good teacher and an indifferent one can mean the world for some people. Even the simplest aspects of teen adolescence, such as teenage smoking and drinking, were put on display with a stunning air of nonchalance. And while many of these things are being represented in today's media, we might be headed a bit too far in the other direction. The current Netflix original TV show, 13 Reasons Why, is another media that deals primarily with teen suicide, with very different results. One scene in which a character explicitly on screen attempts suicide was shown extremely graphically and later had to be removed from the show due to the controversy surrounding it. Many, parents especially, were concerned that the explicit nature of the scene would lead to an increase in copycat suicides. Of course, this isn't to say that 80s teen films were perfect, not by a long shot. Many featured a lot of misogyny and sexism, as well as a notable lack of racial diversity. All of the main characters were white, with the only exceptions being racist archetypes, such as Sixteen Candles' Long Duck Dong. Still, I believe there is a middle ground. By combining modern characters with 80s style writing, media such as Stranger Things checks all the right boxes. It's becoming a favorite amongst people of all ages and for a good reason. The show features an increasingly diverse cast of characters in terms of race, gender, and sexuality, as well as an insanely accurate rural 80s setting, and it's received endless praises for both. And with the fourth season underway, it's unlikely that the Stranger Things phenomenon will be going away anytime soon. Even when the show does inevitably reach its end, there will inevitably be other shows that follow its example, and I, for one, am excited to see it. I wholeheartedly believe that if we take time to learn from the hits and misses made by entertainment writers of the past and present, we are on our way to finding perfect teen entertainment. Thank you.